Welcome everyone to day 22 of Video A Day February. Can't believe it's almost over and uh, it's been really good. I've loved the feedback that you've given about the, the many, many guests that have come through. Thank you for coming. Tonight, we're going to talk about the art of allowing and our guest is Jamie Lerner. Jamie, has a unique ability to reframe even the most difficult situations, which is something that I think a lot of you could use some help with. She can turn what, what might seem to be your biggest nightmare into kind of a Disney-esque affair, something that's more easily managed by giving you some great tips. Jamie loves to talk about the art of allowing, which is what's on the table for discussion today. As I said, she discusses the joys and the freedom to move around the world with having to have you know, a specific point of view and making judgments about everything, about what anyone else is saying or doing. She believes that everyone is allowed to choose what is best for themselves. And when we tend to do what's best for our own selves, we have clarity for ourselves. We don't really care what other people are, have chosen to do for themselves. She says that she never positions herself as an expert of anything and is always reminding us that we know what is best for us always. So let me uh, ask you to join me in welcoming Jamie Lerner to February 2021. Hey, Jamie. Hello. Hi, <laughs> it's so good to see you. It's like we're rounding out the final week and here you are. Thank you for inviting me. No problem. So let's start, let's start this discussion by getting a little background about you because I thought your perspective was very refreshing and interesting. And I wanted to find out, you know, what happened in your life that, you know, that opened your eyes and, and made you change your way of thinking. Well, I was born with a knowing, and I think we all are. And then just as um, we live life, the contrast kind of moves us um, away from our inner knowing, our inner being. And instead of being tuned in to ourselves, we tend to tune out. So um, I always heard my own voice very clearly as a young, very young person. Um, although um, my difficulty was my connection with my mom, which um, I did not have. So I was so connected to myself and yet was disconnected from the person that brought me into this world. And I spent half my life trying to figure what, out what that was all about. Um, and, and then when she was transitioning and I was with her, um, I realized that um, she was never really connected to herself. And so how could she be connected to me if she avoided the most important connection, which was the one to herself? Oh. And so I thought it was really important to... Um, to unravel that for myself and then to really um, write and talk and um, try to impart upon other people that the most important relationship that we have is the relationship with ourselves. So what and, happens when people aren't in touch with themselves? How does that manifest? Well, I think it's interesting because when we are not connected to ourselves, it shows up in ways such as we're always judging other people. And in fact, when we're doing that, we're really judging ourselves. We're disconnected. We're not um, tuned in to um, our, our inner being, which I think is tapping us on the shoulder all day long, 24 seven, 365, trying to get our attention, trying to get us to come back home to ourselves in a, a very loving and non-judgmental way. So we spend a lot of time pointing our fingers at other people, minding not our own business, but putting our attention on you know, someone else's business. And it just, it, it really uh, creates a relationship with ourselves that doesn't feel good. And when we don't feel good about ourselves, we don't feel good about other people. And then we kind of wonder like, how come we're not attracting like these wonderful situations and relationships into our lives? Wow. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so how does, okay, so then the next step must be how we arrive at allowing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the most important thing is that we begin to understand that um, 
the conversations that we're having with ourselves are usually not very nice. Um, if we would listen to the things that we say to ourselves about ourselves, then we would probably have to throw ourselves on the floor and laugh uncontrollably because <laughs> they're absurd and they're not even true. But usually they're not very nice. And it doesn't even matter where those conversations came from, but it's helpful if we can just kind of be a little more conscious of how we're speaking to ourselves about ourselves. And that's Might some of this be considered um, codependency? If people are always focused on, on other people, or is that a little too far left? I don't know about if it's codependency. I think when we're always looking at somebody else, we never have to look at ourselves. So we can get into relationships where we're with somebody and we're always looking at what they're doing that isn't right. And then we never step into the role of taking personal responsibility for looking at ourselves. But the most important thing is to understand that we can look at ourselves with something called loving curiosity. Like how can we become so curious about ourselves hmm. in a very loving and compassionate way that feels good? Because that is, I think, a very important thing for us all to do. So how does that, how do you do that? So I'm assuming it's not like, you know, oh, you're so stupid. Why did you do that? That's a lot of okay. people default to that but kind of language you for themselves. catch yourself doing that, you've got to laugh. You've got to really ask yourself like, oh my goodness, like, how am I speaking to myself like this? <laughs> this is not nice. Like this, okay, how can I soften the language? How can I soften the tone? Where is this even from? Like, is this from something I heard when I was growing up? And it doesn't even matter where it's from. It doesn't apply now because you're not young anymore and you're not in those earlier relationships. You're an adult. And so you have the personal responsibility to change the tone of that conversation that you're having with yourself. How do we stop judging other people? That just seems like an impossible task. I mean, it's like most of my audience is single. And a lot of them do online dating. And part of the, you know, screening process is going to, they're going to have to make some kind of assessments, maybe not as harsh as judging. I don't know. What do you think? What's the way to do that? I mean, if you're in a situation where you have to, you know, pretty much do it, but to do it in a way that's not, uh, going to be really harmful or mean? I think there's a difference between being uh, judgmental and being discerning. Ah, okay. And if we can be discerning, I think that that's very important because that is um, an intuitive process. Because when we are connected to ourselves, we can kind of feel our way through a situation without projecting how we're feeling onto someone else. We are connected to ourselves, we are grounded in who and where we are. And then we're able to really feel out, you know, who we're interacting with without judging. I see. Okay. And discernment's uh, great. <laughs> so you uh, ladies in the chat room, if you have any questions for Jamie, be sure to, you know, type my name. So that's highlighted with the little at sign in front so I can see it. And then I will relay the question to her because we're talking about, you know, the art of allowing. And this is very interesting. That's I think this is really challenging, just allowing other people to be who and what they are. But when we feel good about ourselves, we don't really care what other people are doing because we're focused on ourselves and we're so clear about who we are, where we are and what we're doing. And we really don't have time to be in other people's business. So. It, it feels good to know ourselves and to love ourselves and to just kind of be able to be um, feel good in our own skin. You know, that's the goal. If we can feel good with ourselves, we feel good with other people and we allow other people to be where and who they are. That is allowing. Okay. But then we, that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to continue interacting with them. We just allow them to be who and what they are over there. Exactly. And it's because yeah. really is, doesn't really affect us. Because when we are feeling good about ourselves, we're not affected by what other people are doing. 
we don't really care. We don't. I know. You know, it's like whatever, and it's fine. But it has nothing to do with us. Right. Okay. We have a one question that's just come in. She says, how do you deal with not having a mother present in your life? So is she, are you asking me how did I or how does one? I think she means how does one period because we have, we have a, quite a few uh, participants that have that problem and uh, grew up either with, in, with caring by grandparents or in foster care. Yes. Um, you know, I think that sometimes when we are given a situation, it can either be a blessing, and usually it, it is a blessing. Um, I think that when we have to navigate on our own without a mother or without somebody who we can turn to, then we are required to really look inward more. We have to be tempted depend and rely upon ourselves and our inner voice to guide us. And usually when we do that, we're guided directly, beautifully and divinely. So I found that to be for myself. You know, I really needed to stay connected to myself because my mother emotionally was not available at all for me, which allowed me to um, strengthen the connection and the bond with myself for myself. Oh, excellent. You just had just a strong countenance just from, from the beginning, it sounds like. That's just your personality. Well, it was a, a blessing. Yeah, most definitely. Now, someone wants to ask you, what, what is your opinion on online dating? As I've grown to love myself, I wonder if that's the right place to, quote, shop for love. I love online dating because oh, do I... <laughs> oh, pray do tell. This sounds juicy, Jamie. We even, Jamie's got some tea to spill. <laughs> the reason I really like online dating is because when you um, throw your fishing pole out there <laughs> looking for whatever you're looking for, whatever you attract is a clear and accurate reflection of where you are with yourself. Uh oh, yeah, we're going to have to have a conversation. <laughs> but it really is because how you feel about yourself is really what you attract. And I think it's, it's, it's a great way for us to learn where we are with ourselves in a very curious and loving way. If we're attracting someone that is, you know, wonderful in some ways and not so wonderful in other ways, then that is like the reflecting pool for us. That really is a wonderful way to see where we are with ourselves. And then we can tweak it. And then we can throw our pole back in. But if you're going to attract someone and think you're going to change them, no way. It's just not happening. So what you attract, if you like it, great. If you don't, throw your pole back. We are not here to change anybody. That's just not right. our job. So That's too much work. It is too much work, but online um, dating, I think, is really fun. And as long as you are having fun doing it, do it. Okay. I also think that when you write your profile, how you feel about yourself is very, um, that is really shows you what you will attract. Oh, so you're, so you should only write a profile where you're feeling really good and upbeat and positive Absolutely. about yourself. Oh, that is a great tip. And then you should rewrite your profile because with every person that you attract, you probably want something different. Wow. Like going shopping. Like, you know, if you're not finding it, then you need to return it. Oh. Go somewhere else. You know? Wait. <laughs> we have another question. She says, uh, do you have any suggestions, Jamie, as to how we can stop guessing sec second guessing our inner knowing? Yes. Think about all the times you knew, even though you didn't know how or why you knew, and you did not listen to yourself. Ooh. I've heard so many people say, I should have listened to myself. And I never have heard anyone say, I should not have listened to myself. So you trust yourself, you know, but most of the time we don't know why or how we know, but we always know for ourselves. We don't know for another. We only know for ourselves. 
So wow. Trust yourself. Well, how can, you know, we connect boundaries with the, with the art of allowing? In some ways, they really go hand in hand because when we are minding our own business and focusing on ourselves, that's a very clear boundary. Mm. So when I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm feeling good about it, I'm not really inviting other people to give me their opinion of how they are feeling about me. You know, I'm not, I'm not asking someone, you know, what do you think I should do? Where do you think I should go? It's none of that. I'm just very clear and very comfortable. So that's a beautiful boundary. Oh, that is good. As we, 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 we're learning boundaries here and uh, every kind of reinforcement tactic that um, the guests are providing is, is just been really wonderful. Yeah, boundaries, well, we have some issues. Let's talk about fear though. Um, it seems like a lot of women struggle with that. You know, they're afraid to do something or even to not do something. They're afraid to change. They're afraid to grow because leaving behind, you know, it's familiar. Do you have any suggestions for how someone can deal with their fears? Sometimes if I'm thinking of doing something and not really sure if I'm ready, I ask myself, which feels better, to do it or not do it? Because you're giving yourself the choice over and over again. It's, it's no longer about fear. It's about which is going to feel better. In this moment, is it going to feel better to take that next step? Or is it going to feel better to stay where I am? Because once you give yourself a choice, a conscious choice, then I think it's easier to make that decision and go back and forth. Sometimes I don't get to the place where I, I know, but if you know that it will feel better to do something, do it. And then the next question is, does it feel better to do something more or not? So it's just moment by moment, you know, ease your way into a conversation and feel your way through it. You, know, you always know for yourself. You just do. You're right. And you're, I mean, it's amusing to hear you say it like you've never heard anyone say, I shouldn't have listened to myself. I have never heard that either. So oh. it was kind of interesting that you said yeah. that. <laughs> uh, we have time for a few more questions. If you have um, some more questions that in the listening audience that you would like to ask Jamie Lerner, we're talking about the art of allowing and throwing in a few other things to, that have to do with self-love and relationships. So if someone, um, we're going to ask you, Jamie, for your, say, top two pieces of advice for re, on a relationship, what would you suggest? I think that if you don't love yourself, that you cannot expect anyone else to love you. So it's your responsibility to begin to create and recreate moment by moment a loving relationship with yourself so that you can then go on and co-create a loving relationship with somebody else. So that's where it all begins. It begins with you or me. or And that's what people don't want to hear. They really don't. Yeah. They want to hear it's, it's the other person's fault. It's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> it, and it, it's just, it isn't. But on the other hand, it's so amazing because you have all the power to create the relationship with yourself and then to create it with another. And that feels really, really good. Like you're not the victim to anybody or to anything. So um, I don't know. It's just a, a good place to start. And then once again, if you think you're going to change someone, no. <laughs> nobody's changing they're just not they're not changing and no one should change for us they really shouldn't you know once again you love yourself you will allow the other person to be who and where they are and you will either appreciate that and want to be part of that or you won't that I think is what so many women struggle with because they get into a you know a relationship and they start you know they, they develop feelings for the guy and then if they step back and allow him to be who he and what he is, 
then that person is not somebody they really want to be with. And there at that moment comes the decision, what you said, do, you know, is it going to hurt more to, to change or, or to stay? They postpone that decision. And so they just stay where they are and suffer. But there is a lot of power in deciding that you're going to choose to stay in something that you know is not good for you. That is a powerful choice that I applaud. It's better to say, I know this relationship is not good for me and I'm making a conscious choice to stay here because it feels better than leaving. That is powerful. You're not a victim, you're choosing and that's okay. That's a good thing. Wow, that, but see, that requires ownership. Of, yes, like what you said, requires owner, owning the fact that you made this decision. Yes. No one's forcing yes. you to stay there. No, but that should feel good that you're choosing it. Okay. You're getting a lot of compliments and they're saying, you're amazing. Oh. She's, she's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good, though, Jamie. These, these are giving some really great tips. So any other questions for you? Because otherwise, I'm, you know, going to, to let Jamie go and do her thing because we don't want to keep her here forever. But I am enjoying talking to you. Um, one thing I ask each guest, you can't get away without this, this question here. What is your definition of self-love? I think that when we are open to receiving our inner knowing and our inner being, every single moment we are feeling like someone or something is tapping us on the shoulder. We can all relate to it. Most of the time we're just brushed away, like not now, I don't have time. I can't deal with this. And not, you know, it's almost like it's become so annoying but to really hear that inner voice and that inner guidance, I think that is self-love. It really is, it's like coming home to ourselves. It's like embracing ourselves. Um, and that is true self-love. There is no judgment there. There is no, you know, we don't turn an unkind eye to ourselves. It's really, uh, just a beautiful place to be. We're at ease with ourselves. We're comfortable in our skin. That's self-love. Okay, yeah. that is beautiful. If someone is really young and they, what if they're in a situation where, you know, they're trying to get here, but they're surrounded by older people, parental figures, older siblings, teachers perhaps, that um, are hitting them with negative judgments. What can they do to strengthen their their mind so that they don't absorb that? I think their mantra should be, I'm so sorry that you're feeling so badly about yourself Ooh. Meaning to the other people. Because when people are unkind, they are really not feeling good about themselves. When people are judgmental, they are not feeling good about themselves. And so to really know that those people, those People are not treating you this way for any other reason other than the fact that they are disconnected and they don't like themselves. So wow. when we understand that and not take it personally, it really helps. Okay. But lots of it is just projection. And it's, it's you know, I'm so sorry that you're feeling this way. Well, I'm going to practice that. <laughs> But it's true, you know, it's a compassionate way to really address people who are unkind. And unkind people need kindness the most. Oh, okay, I'll try to find some. That's hard for people. <laughs> it really is. It is. Okay, well, we have one last question for you, Jamie. And she asks, is it bad to decide to avoid contact with your parents and some members of your family? because they neglected you for a long time. Which feels better? Which feels better to have contact with them or not to have contact with them? And only you will know that for yourself, go back and forth. And if it feels better, have contact. And if it doesn't feel better, don't have contact. Jamie, but you just made that so crystal clear and simple. <laughs> 
what can you say? There's just, I, the, did you hear that flow flow? She just broke it down. Okay, that's all you have to ask yourself, that one question. And it changes moment by moment. I love it. That was great. I like the simple, very clear message that you delivered tonight. So, Jamie, tell, tell us uh, where we can find you and find out some more about what you're doing and, you know, what you got going on in case they want to participate. I have a website. It's www.jamie-lerner. I have a um, service called The Quickie, a lovely texting option, which... Um, People buy blocks of time and they text with me back and forth, which I like because is they are texting me a question and I am answering the question. In many ways, they've already answered their own question. Mm -hmm. And they have this ongoing transcript of what they texted me and what I texted back to them and what they already knew for themselves. So, um, and there's a lot of free information on my website and podcasts and um just some good stuff, but be gentle with yourself. That's what I can say. Love yourself, know yourself, appreciate yourself, be gentle with yourself. Oh, and your voice is so calming and, you know, <laughs> you. it kind of it encourages, oh, I shouldn't say mean things to myself. Look how Jamie's talking. I, you know, I can't imagine you saying anything cruel to anyone, including yourself, with that tone and, you know, the <laughs> disposition that you're projecting. Well, I am laughing all the time with myself, at myself, about myself, every time I catch myself saying something unkind. And then you find yourself laughing all day long and it feels really good. <laughs> Perfect. Uh -huh. Well, Jamie, thank you so much for stopping by. Try to come by, I don't know, a day or two from now and see if there's some, you know, questions for you or comments and people want to, you know, reach, touch out, touch base with you after the, uh, after the, the show. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, that was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much for coming. See you later. Okay, you guys, that was Jamie Lerner. I just love that. I loved how she made things so clear and so, so easy to understand. And so it's not a hard thing for you to make notes of. Did you Get the homework here, okay? I hope you guys brought your notebooks. Remember, you're supposed to bring them to every show. And this one, you're going to write down to be kind to yourself and to catch yourself every time that you get ready to say something cruel. Now, one of the other guests had the, the, uh, the plan that every time you say something like that, you put some money in a jar, like, you know, the whole family participate. But it's the same thing if you're noticing this pattern. You've got to, to the messages that you give yourself have to be kind and positive. If you're always beating yourself up, that's not showing yourself love. And so the other thing that we talk about all the time is trusting ourselves, trusting your gut. That inner knowing is going to always guide you right Every time something you get in a situation and some little voice is telling you, you shouldn't do this. I don't think that's the right thing to do. I don't trust this person. We shouldn't go with them. And, you know, you should always listen. You should always listen to yourself. So um, this is day 22. Tomorrow we're back to our advice, our crazy advice show. So I hope you guys are here at the same time tomorrow, 6 p.m. Pacific. And, uh, you know, let me know how you how you enjoying this on the community wall. Make a note about what you think about February so far. If there's a particular guest that you really like their message, let me know. OK, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific. Be right here. Bye bye.